revolutionary music makers. I'm Kate Harmony, this is Ray Harmony, and welcome to Hack Music Theory, where we help you make great music that stands out. And if you're new to music theory, we've got a free book for you, 12 Music Theory Hacks to Learn Scales and Chords, which you can download from the link below. It only takes about 30 minutes to read, and you'll have a super solid music theory foundation after that. So do it. All right, so last week, we had a polymeter party, and thank you for joining <laughs> us if you were there. Um, if you weren't, We'll put a link below. You can you can check that. Mm -hmm. This is where we got to. Have a listen real quick. So uh, we got the bass down here, um, and these are uh, just little chords, uh, little uh, pizzicato string chords, and that's on another track. But these are just muted on this track, and then we got some drums. So these were in five sixteen, uh, and then the uh, bass was in seven eight, and uh, drums were in four four uh, with we displaced the backbeat, which is very cool. You definitely need to watch that video last week if you, if you didn't. That was a cool trick. So here's where we were at. Okay, so um, it, it actually sounds like, because we, um, so from here, like the, um, the backbeat on the snare drum is displaced. Um, so it kind of makes this sound like, a one of um, of the so it kind of sounds like it actually goes out of four four. It sounds like it's kind of like one bar of seven four over here, and then like one bar of five four actually. So, but the drums started. They were supposed to be in four four. I think they they were a bit naughty and went into seven four <laughs> and five four. <laughs> yeah, totally sounds like that. Um, all right, so. Uh, today, um, oh yeah, we were just saying about um, the the video last week. Just wanted to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. really lovely comments. Mm -hmm. That means the world to us. And uh, I was having a um, who uh, I was uh, our, our regular viewer, Mohammed Reza. Uh, Mohammed Reza, yeah, shout out. <laughs> um, he was saying something about um, writing from from scratch on camera. Um, and, you know, it, it is, uh, so I was kind of chatting with him saying, you know, it's a very uh, vulnerable thing to do, uh, which is why people don't do it. Um, and we're obsessed with lifting that veil um, because, yeah, because the problem is that, you know, everyone makes music behind closed doors. Um, you don't ever see that. If there's a camera in there, you, you know what you're watching is totally edited unlike this which is totally unedited um so you know you kind of you see the the little highlight you know the when when something cool happened you know that's in the video and um but writing writing from scratch on camera unedited is very vulnerable people don't do it but the downside of people not doing it um on camera and sharing that is that the, uh, the the process of making music seems elusive to mm -hmm. um, to people that are learning how to do it, and and that's a real problem because the fact is that making music is just a simple step by step process fueled by creativity and theory. It's really that it's it's that simple. It isn't it isn't anything mysterious, and it is definitely not elusive. Um, it is magic. It is absolutely <laughs> magic, uh, but it's um, you know it is it's just a matter of um, following following the steps, and that's what we do in our online apprenticeship mm -hmm. course. By the way, um, so if you if you do want to learn the the methods for being able to just you know follow um, follow the steps and make great music, then check out our online apprenticeship course. Uh, link is below. All right, um, now let's get let's get to it. So we uh, we want to have a look at this baseline because uh, and here's one of the many uh, many issues that a lot of uh, songwriters and producers um, kind of the, the the trap they fall into. You get a cool baseline um, like this and then that's that's it you move on um, mm -hmm. but it's vital to take every element of your music 
to its full potential. So, um, you know, we just kind of got this baseline by copying and pasting our, um, this is our uh, seven, eight here, and we just copied and pasted it um, to there and then again. And um, it's awesome, but it's, it's, it's a starting point, you know, it's not at its full potential yet because we haven't explored anything beyond mm -hmm. that. So, you know, when you come up with uh, an idea and then um, you materialize that, then explore uh, where it can go uh, from there. And it's, uh, it's always going to be centered around um, variation. So repetition and variation, um, because, you know, making music is, is, is always a balance of that, you know, too much repetition and people just Boring. get, yeah, they just get, um, get overwhelmed with new, you know, new content. And it's just like, it just turns into noise. Um, and then too much, um, wait, which one did I say? Uh, Variation. Did I get that the wrong way around? Oh, I don't know. This is a problem with live TV. <laughs> 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 too much, too much repetition. It's boring. Is boring. I think I said the wrong one. Too much variation, um, is what I meant. It's, it's too much variation creates too much content, yeah. um, which is then overwhelming, right? So, um, you need to give them enough repetition so they can hold on to that and really get their teeth stuck in but you need enough variation so it doesn't get boring um, and that's always an amazing place to start um, when you have your baseline or whatever it is you've got it down then start um, exploring its full potential mm -hmm. by exploring how you can vary it um, so we are um, we're in uh, C double harmonic major by the way which um, is such a cool scale. So we got the one flat two, three. Um, it's called double harmonic because of the um, the three semitone intervals. So it's that augmented second, and you get two of them. It's amazing. Um, harmonic minor, you get one, but in the scale you get two. So you flat two, three, four, five, and then flat six, seven. Um, okay, so that's our root down here. C. And uh, one of the um, one of the things that uh, stands out when um, when I'm listening to this is there's a few little uh, little kicks uh, in the drums because the drums we wanted to lock in between the five sixteen um, up here in, the, in those um, pizzicato string chords um, and we wanted to lock it in with the seven eight so mm -hmm. the kick drum is actually kind of playing in both of those time signatures um, and that's it's kind of come together to create this really cool kick pattern which is obviously very unique because it's you know coming from polymeter so um, but here's the thing there's a couple of these up here um, like this one right here that isn't accented so I think like a really cool place to start just with little variations is to mm. um, to lock those in so if we just split this note here um, so now we're going to hit that root twice the second time um, and that's just going to lock it in with that kick um, and also that creates variation so it's very subtle it's very subtle but um, it's it makes it makes a big difference just gives that um, that kick here a little a little more energy um, and then maybe here we do um, do the same thing, um, but because um, here's the thing: like when you set up um, when you set up a, a loop, the um, the second time, especially in a polymeter, because um, you're not expecting you're not expecting to hear um, the first note of the riff. I mean, you're not expecting to, for the riff to start again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on you know the the seventh eight note right because it's in seven eight but you're obviously expecting it to be in four four so um we don't want to vary too much in the second one um especially not the beginning varying the beginning here would be too much too soon because then if you vary the second um loop over here what happens is the listener is going to perceive that as actually like an ongoing mm -hmm. um you know, like the baseline is still going on. It hasn't started looping yet. And then you lose the effect of like the mm -hmm. seven, eight polymeter. So we want to make it very clear that, um, that it's starting again here, but we wanted just a little variation. Hence, hence that one there. 
Um, but now the third time, we want something a lot more interesting here because um, because this is um, this is where it gets into the kind of um, what I call the too much chocolate, you know, too much too much chocolate um, <laughs> problem, too much of a good thing. Um, often when you get around to like the third loop, it's like now it's gonna start sounding the way they expect it to sound because mm -hmm. they've heard two mm -hmm. of them. So this is where you know changing it up um, just enough can can be really cool, um, given that little dopamine hit, you know. Um, so I'm thinking we do the same thing here, um, cut it here to match up with that kick there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but but here's the thing. Um, for a third time through a third loop, that's not enough. Because um, while that was enough the second time, right, just hitting that, that root twice, that was enough the second time. It's not enough the third time now mm -hmm. because you, and, and you know, the fact that we, it, we are um, switching it around because this one's a 16th note and then an eighth note, this one's an eighth and then a 16th. It's not enough for the third loop. It's like we need something a bit more. So um, a really cool hack is uh, you can use an octave of, of the same note. So we'll just take this up to the octave above. Um, so it's still the same note, but by playing it an octave higher, uh, it, it gives the bass line movement, mm -hmm. which gives it energy without changing the note so this is all just still c but the listener is going to perceive that as a change of note um which you know key, and especially because it's a high note it's gonna you know get like grab their attention um all kinds of cool things are going to come from from that variation there um <laughs> yeah because uh -huh. you're not expecting that uh -huh. um that's wicked, that's wicked. Okay, now check this out. Like this has actually been this 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 one especially it's been bugging me for the for the last week. Um because it was a week ago that we did this the first session. And I was like, oh there's so many ideas that this is why we gotta make more videos now. Um so many ideas I didn't get to do. Um so uh here we go. Um a week later, finally. Um, there's a kick here and it's such a cool syncopated kick. So syncopation is when you accent the offbeat and this is like a 16th note syncopation there. Um, it's so cool. But the bass kind of ruins it by playing here like on the eighth note. And then when that kick uh -huh. does come in, there's like nothing really there. So I was kind of hearing this from, from like last week. I think we shorten this and actually extend that. So for the first time now, we're getting that, um, and this is like the seven, right? The um, the major seven. It's like a pretty pretty mm -hmm. tense note up here, um, and then obviously going three semitones down that augmented second. That's a beautiful rare interval, right? Because you don't often get three a three semitone interval between adjacent notes in um, in a scale. Um, so check that out. This is that B there, and then there second time, and then third time. Whoa, hello. Um, so not only is it syncopated, right, coming in on that offbeat 16th there, but it's actually an eighth note because you're definitely not expecting that. Um, I think that's going to be so sweet. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. That feels, that feels better. Um, and lastly, um, the, the turnaround um, of... Um, the ending here what i'm what i'm thinking is um because we're playing um on uh this is like super cool um bass sound from uh stephen wilson's ghost rider pack um which is just amazing and no we're not endorsed we have we happily pay good money for for the sound <laughs> um so it's a nice low c um and starting with that low c is just so um it just punches you in the gut it's so cool um a good punch in the gut um not a bad punch in the gut <laughs> it's a musical punch in the gut that's, okay um, yeah um the, there's that bob marley saying the good thing about music is mm. when it hits you you feel no pain or something i don't know yeah big up bob marley <laughs> um 
So what I'm thinking here is um, by going down to that note there, um, it's kind of adding too much weight at the mm. end. Um, and then you're kind of it, really taking away the, that gut punch the of the first one. Mm. Um, so um, I, think, I think we lift this up an octave. Um, but I think on its own, that's going to be a bit weird. Um, And maybe throw that one up too. Um, but it's now, it's like that's a bit kind of weak, just like <laughs> it's kind of random. So I'm thinking what we could do is, um, and there's a snare fill here, which is cool. So um, I'm wondering if we do 16s like that. But um, if you, uh, so if you change your grid to 30 seconds and then you just shorten them like that. So you're playing them staccato, which is like separated, disconnected, like a bah, 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 like super short sound. <laughs> I think that could be, that could be pretty cool. Um, that's kind of cool. Maybe bring one down. That's kind of cool, but I feel like maybe we should do the same here. Uh, maybe just because I want it to flow a little bit. Maybe this one. Um... Oh, that could be cool. Yeah. I just want to try it the other way around as well. So, uh, move, so basically move. Um, so go low, high, and then low. Um, I don't want to go do that one high. But... Nah, undo. I like the because you kind of lose. I like how these are on those um, those eighth notes. So you get that accent there, and then there, uh -huh. and there. So so th yeah, those those three are all on that eighth note accent. Yeah. to be maybe this one just so you get a little bit of movement oh that's cool maybe we do like that so you have a little staccato one high and then a longer like a full 16th low and then a quick one oh that could be kind of cool oh but then maybe we should do that one <laughs> Cool. I wonder if that should be an octave lower as well. So, um, because the, the, the root is C um, and it's super low on that, so if this was a real bass, it would be detuned um, or like a five string. Um, but because uh, normal four string bass goes down to E, so this is nice low sound for a, for a real a bass guitar sound. Um, but I wanted to really keep that that root as like the lowest note um, but I don't mind going down to this B um, here because it's just a 16th and you're gonna get a really cool semitone up to the root I feel like oh, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> We get, oh, oh no, we're, uh, we're getting there.
Maybe. Maybe this one needs to be shown. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe these. Maybe we need to go the other way around. It's you see the ideas there, but it's like you need to work it. You need to work mm -hmm. it. It's patience. Just, just keep working that. Just keep massaging that idea till it, <laughs> till it molds into what you're, what you're wanting. <laughs> It's all about patterns, right? Especially introducing something weird like that. You want to, like, giving it to them three times, like, helps create a pattern. So it's like, first time it's a bit weird, but then after that, it's like, okay. And then I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I was kind of hearing the, uh, the staccato, like, those short ones, but maybe it's a, a 16th note is, that's short enough, probably. <laughs> Yeah, we're it's it's so close. I think all we need to do is it's a bit like down on down on It's a bit uh -huh. too. So what I'm thinking, pull this guy down and glue them together. Mm. Um, get some syncopation in the end, right? Because it's it's sounding too much, mm. um, too much like on on the beat. Too too many like sixteenths and just predictable. So this is going to create a huge syncopation here. Um, that 16th off and then nothing on that on that chord note beat. Um, that's, that's, that's better. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool, yeah. I like how that kind of goes down a semitone there and then you get this going a semitone up there. So you kind of have this, this these two contrasting, you know, mm -hmm. um, the bass going semitone or the kind of the low, it's almost like splitting into two voices there, low voice going semitone down, um, and, and actually here, I mean, it's, it's going um, two semitones down, but it's still that, that different movement to the semitone up. Yeah. That's giving me a feeling now. You've got to wait for that feeling. It's like, it wasn't right, so just keep working on it. Um, I think we're there. That's wicked. Um, I'm wondering, like this this note here um, is uh, it's pretty cool. Like in the the first time through, we get um, a we get these two little sixteens, um, and we got drums on both of them. But then the second time, we don't have a drum. Like there's nothing on that one. Which is like it's it's kind of it's. It, it's kind of it's kind of interesting but um i wonder if we should put a kick on that to um to just give it a little bit of consistency because it's so weird sometimes like you know mm -hmm. when you're when you're doing um oh where was it um on beat three or bar two um where are we, yeah um so when yeah when you're doing something pretty um pretty adventurous it's um sometimes it's good to just throw like a little bit of a um you know an extra um pattern something that's a little bit um the same at least when you're playing with polymers <laughs> for your listeners benefit yeah Oh, you know what? We could even throw like because uh, this is cool. Okay, so apparently we're uh, making the drums a little bit better here. Too, so, um, taking the drums to their potential, we could do that same little thing here. It's gonna, it's gonna give a really cool motif to that second um, loop. And also, I'm wondering if we put a kick in here just to get the. Um, <laughs> Maybe a snare because we 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 took the accent off that in the bass, so that could be kind of cool. I mean, I 
guess we could do two. Oh, I wonder if we do that again. Oh, if we put that little motif again, <laughs> right? The little like do Oh, that could be kind of cool right at the end. You're totally not going to be expecting that. Does that go on the snare though? No. No. <laughs> oh, that syncopation there is super tasty. Super tasty because the bass hits right there. So um, anyway, we've been plenty long enough. What's the time? Oh, <laughs> ouch! <laughs> Play like, yeah, through. It'll, be, yeah, Play it'll through. just be like eight minute video, but first, ten minutes. I didn't even drink tea. <laughs> anyway. You know you're onto some magic when the tea is getting neglected. Um, getting cold. All right, so that's it. We'll do the final playthrough now, um, and. Um, so that's it. Um, you don't need to see the chords up top, but if you want to. Um, just for the accents. Um, that's it. It's been amazing. Um, thank you once again for coming <laughs> behind the closed doors into our studio and witnessing the um, totally not elusive process of making music. Um, see? Evolution of the bass. Yeah, simple step-by-step -step process. Um, oh yeah, so remember, if you, if you like this uh, video and if you like the style of video, then you'll love our online apprenticeship course because it's... Like this. So it's an entire song. Um, I write an entire song from start to finish. While teaching. While teaching all every things. single thing. And kind of thinking out loud, explaining the process, teaching all the theory um, from start to finish. It's, it's all there. So um, Epic. Yeah, you will learn about my secret method of song whispering. So there you go. Um, that's, our, that's our secret sauce. Go and get it hackmusictheory.com um, you've That's been amazing it. and we will and we love see hearing you from you next so time yeah 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 please um, it's yeah it's, it's, it's wonderful super fun so we'll we'll chat in the comments and uh, we'll see you next week for some more um, <laughs> and okay. here we go play I hope they can see the notes on the sometimes the camera little oh yeah I know sometimes we get in the way down here um, apologies All right. Play through. Bye. <laughs>